So welcome everyone to the big day of um, launching, not really launching. Today we're gonna um, show Keyman 14 to the world. And we are happy to have all of you here. And we will also um, have the founder of Keyman, so previously called Tawalti Soft, uh, Mr. Mark Durden. And he will be talking about the overview of uh, Keyman 14. So all things Keyman. But then after that, we will also have other seminars afterward as well. There will be, actually not will be, we are being recorded right now. <laughs> and this recording will be uploaded on YouTube as well. So you can access it later if you uh, missed it because of the internet connection or something. The uh, question session will be um, at the end of this uh, presentation. So if you have any question, feel free to uh, note it or type it in the chat box. So um, maybe our team can go and answer if it is not uh, so um, problematic. <laughs> so now I give the floor to Mr. Mark Durden. Thank you, Makara. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking, yeah, as, as Makara said about Keyman. So I'll talk a little bit first about the history of Keyman, uh, just so to put it all in a bit of context. So I first started writing Keyman myself in 1992, 1993, uh, while living in Laos and developing a solution for Laos. And that was at the behest of my father, who was working in, in Laos at that time. After we had some success with using it for Laos, uh, there were people in other parts of Southeast Asia who saw the program and asked if they could use it. So then I had to rewrite it to make it more generic for other languages. And since that time, it has spread uh, to be used throughout the world in by SIL International, which is the organization that we work for. And uh, is used by many other people as well. So what is Keyman? It's actually a little bit hard to answer this question sometimes because it's not like a physical keyboard, but it's a software keyboard that remaps that physical keyboard to allow you to type in a different language. It also provides an on-screen keyboard which you can see a, a picture of here. And then on touch devices, mobile devices and, and tablets, it provides a touch keyboard, which is very familiar if you've been using uh, touch devices, of course. We aim to integrate the app into the operating system as closely as possible, so that it works like part of the device or part of the, the operating system, part of the computer. We try and make it unobtrusive. And we've worked really hard to make the keyboard design language powerful so that it can solve keyboarding problems that other tools cannot, particularly for languages with uh, scripts that are more complex than say English Latin script. Keyman is more than just the app. Keyman is also a community of keyboard developers around the world. And I suspect some of you here today are in that community. Uh, the community have contributed 700 keyboard layouts or so. In fact, it's more than that, but that's 700 published ones that are ready for use already. And those keyboard layouts support over 2,100 different languages. And you can see a small selection of those languages there. Anybody can create their own keyboard layout using the Keyman developer tool, which we'll talk a bit more about later. And you can share your keyboard layouts with your community, peer-to-peer, -peer, and also through our server, through keyman.com, essentially, which we call Keyman Cloud because it sounds cooler. And when you do that, then it becomes very easy for anybody in the world to download and install the keyboard. And I will demonstrate that a little bit later on as well. But Keyman would be nothing without that community of keyboard developers. So really, we do, we do the work on the low level bits and pieces to make Keyman work with the operating system 
but where the value is delivered is in those keyboard layouts created by community members and linguists and researchers. Keyman also works on multiple platforms. So you can create one keyboard layout and use it everywhere. So Keyman works on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, Chromebook to some degree, which we're still working on, iPhone and iPad, and you can also embed a Keyman keyboard into a web page, which you can see, for instance, on keymanweb.com. Also importantly, Keyman is completely free. It's open source, which means that we publish the entire source code of Keyman on a website called GitHub. You can download the source code and you can use freely available tools to compile it yourself and make your own version of Keyman that's completely independent of anything we do. That gives you a lot of freedom and security. If you do want to use Keyman and you don't like the way that we take it, you can fork it, which is what it's called when you make your own copy and publish your own version. And that the only restriction is that you can't use the name Keyman in that instance. So we use the MIT license to try and give as much freedom to the community as possible when distributing Keyman. Now Keyman is developed and distributed and supported by SAL International. And they cover the cost of running the servers and running, downloading or building all the equipment that we need or buying all the, sorry, buying all the equipment we need, the phones, test phones, the computers and things like that. SAL actually is supported by donation. So if you would like to support the work of Keyman, I would encourage you to uh, visit our website and uh, click the donate link or talk to us. So that's enough about what is Keyman and what, what we do. But before we go any further, since we do have uh, members of the Keyman team here, I'd just like to do a quick intro. Um, so, I'll just get each one of you to just unmute and say hello so that your face appears on the screen if that's okay. So Darcy. Hi, my name is Darcy and I am the product lead for the Android. Thank you, Josh. Hi, my name is Joshua Horton and I am the product lead for iOS for the embeddable web engine and for the predictive test components. There's a lot of work on your shoulders there, Josh. <laughs> and Eberhard? Hi, I'm Eberhard Beinhardt. Um, I'm the product lead for the Linux platform. And uh, Makara? Hi, I'm Makara, Makara Sop. I am the um, user support and also a tester for Keyman. Thanks, everyone. So, Keyman 14. Some of the key features that we've been working on, and I'll go through these in a little bit more detail, um, if they're at all interesting, um, in the upcoming slides. So we've reworked the keyboard search entirely in version 14 to try and make it work more consistently and eat more um, accessibly. We've made the user interface localizable, so you can translate all of the messages and strings that you see in the user interface into your own language. We've simplified the distribution model for keyboard packages so that you can have a single keyboard package for all platforms. And because Keyman is like any software and it's not 100% bug free despite our best efforts, um, we've included crash reporting, uh, which is all consolidated across all the platforms and all report to one place which makes it much easier for us to uh, proactively address errors when they occur. For those people who are supporting Keyman, we've tried to reduce the mental load a little bit by using an identical version number for all platforms now. So if you know that you're on 14.0.270, that's gonna be the same for Windows and for iPhone and for Android and so on. So the simpler and smoother keyboard search. We, in version 13 and earlier versions, we had a mix of keyboard search mechanisms which had grown over time. So you had one, one system for the mobile phone, you had another system for uh, the keyboard for Windows, and a third system if you were looking on the website. 
each of those systems had slightly different ways of doing the search and drilling down to find the keyboard that you wanted. And none of them were particularly uh, smooth for, for end users. So what we've done now is we've unified that search uh, across all the different devices on the website and in the app. So the search you do on, a web, on the website on keyman.com and the search you do in the Keyman app will produce exactly the same results. We've also simplified the search to make it more you know, search engine-like. So it returns a single list of results so you don't have to drill down into multiple levels to find what you're looking for. We kind of like drilling down in a sort of tree type of structure because we're computer programmers, but uh, it actually doesn't really work quite as well as having a single list. We've also now included information about the popularity of keyboards, which just helps you to choose a keyboard that's more likely to be the one you want. And last but not least, we've tried to make it so that there's fewer steps to get to that install link, which really at the end of the day is all that we really care about. So I can keep talking about it, but you might fall asleep. So instead I'm gonna try and show it to you. So let's see how this goes, if I can find the right one. Keyboard search. I need to search for a language. Uh, let's try Tamil. So here we've got a list of Tamil keyboards for Keyman. And you notice I just typed Tamil. I actually didn't press enter. It immediately came back with the results. I'm gonna go with this one. It looks pretty popular. That's Tamila Tamil 99. And now you can see we take, I click on that link and I'm taken to an information page about the keyboard. Over here, you can see this QR code. So if you're on a phone, you can scan that QR code. So if you're on the computer and you wanna load it on your phone, scan the QR code and it will load on your phone. Down here, we have some of the details. So the documentation for the keyboard, uh, which is quite helpful if you don't know exactly how to type in with the keyboard. The source code. So every keyboard that we share has the full source available, just like the app. So you can take that source code and you can change it and you can make your own version of it. And you can see here the list of supported languages. So for this particular keyboard, it's just one language, but many keyboards support multiple languages. Now, when I click install keyboard, you're going to see it's gonna pop up and immediately we get a, a box that opens up and says open keyman configuration. So when I do that, it's just loading now. It's actually downloading the keyboard straight away and making it ready to install. And I can just click that install button and off I go. I won't do that just yet because I'm gonna go now and click download keyboard. This is what will happen if you do not have Keyman already installed. So you click download keyboard and we'll save it to my machine. We'll open it up and say, yes, we allow this to happen. And it's now asking me if I want to install the Tamil, Tamil, uh, Tamil 99 2.0.2 for Tamil language keyboard. And if I click install, it will go ahead and install it into Keyman. Alternatively, if I go through Keyman configuration and I click download keyboard, and I can see, you can see it's exactly the same search. I can do Tamil, and there it is again. Let's go this one this time, new typewriter. And we have a single install button and it's the same process again. So trying to make, reduce all of that friction of how do I get the keyboard onto my computer. Importantly, when you download the keyboard the first time before you have Keyman installed, it will install both Keyman and the keyboard and configure your languages correctly on your computer, which means you don't need to have to fiddle around with that um, or following multiple steps. It does it all in that one step. And we follow this exact same process on all the platforms. Each platform has slight differences just because of the way the uh, operating system works or the device works, but in all cases, it's just that download keyboard to get started. So in Keyman 14, we've got, gone to a lot of effort to try and make it 
uh, internationalized, which means that we make every part of the, the app uh, translatable into another language. And you can see here, these are some of the translations that people have started on. So uh, Khmer here is at uh, nearly 100%, which is I think thanks to Makara, um, who's done the hard work on that. And we are receiving more translations um, every week now, which is very exciting. Uh, so these translations are submitted by the user community. So if you'd like to do a translation for your language, um, I'd really be excited. And I can show you very quickly what that looks like. So you, you would sign up to this translate.kimand.com site. When you sign up, you'll get access to um, contribute to a translation or you can start a new translation. So if we look, for instance, at uh, Burmese, which is at 20% translated, and then we can scroll through this and it shows you the different apps and the different files that need translation. So I'll have a look at the Windows one, which is actually the only one that's partially translated for Burmese. And I'll make sure the filter shows uh, the approved ones to start. Oh, no, not approved, sorry, not approved. Yeah, so you can see here, we have some uh, translation for the word cancel, which is the cancel button. And uh, a translation for the OK, translation for the word options. And you can see it gives you a little bit more information about where that's used, the configuration, dialogue, the tab names. I won't go into more detail than that now because this is the overview, uh, but there's plenty of help available from the team and the Kimant community if you do want to do a translation. Right now, the translations are released in updates to the Keyman apps. So you can't download a translation and add it to an existing version. You do have to wait until we release an update to the app. Uh, we would like to try and make it possible to get away from that in a future version. So very briefly on this point, one size fits all keyboard packages. In Keyman 13, and this is relevant to keyboard developers, you did need to worry about distributing uh, JavaScript and font files separately to, um, to the keyboard. Uh, in Kman 14, you can bundle them all together in a package file. So the package file contains the font, the keyboard file itself, of course, the documentation, and puts it all in one file that makes it easier to share that file and use it everywhere. Now onto some of the um, details for some of the different platforms. So in version 14, we've renamed Keyman Desktop to Keyman for Windows. And we did this because back in the day when we gave the name Keyman Desktop, it was the only version of Keyman. There was no Keyman for Mac or for Linux or Android or anything else. And so we were di differentiating between Keyman Developer, which is the tool to create a keyboard and Keyman desktop, which is a tool to use a keyboard. But now that we've got Keyman on all those platforms, um, it gets kind of confusing if it's Keyman desktop on Windows. So we've tried to bring that in line with everything else. If Keyman is not running with version 14, the Keyman keyboards will still be listed. In earlier versions, you could see the keyboards would disappear if Keyman was not running. So you can see here, I've got all these Keyman keyboards installed and they're all visible. If I exit Keyman, those keyboards will stay there, but they won't work. We did this because we found that removing the keyboards would sometimes lose the Windows language uh, associations, which cause chaos with some, some people's apps. So leaving the keyboards there just makes that a lot more stable. Keyman also no longer has any dependencies on Internet Explorer. This is particularly relevant for Windows 7 and 8. Uh, now you don't have to try and bring your OS up to date with the latest version of Internet Explorer before you install Keyman. Given that Internet Explorer is no longer in use, um, we wanted to get away from that. It also means that when we have the keyboard documentation and the Keyman uh, user interface, the configuration user interface, we are able to present and use technologies from modern web technologies, uh, which we weren't able to do before. That includes embedded fonts and 
other similar things. In Keyman 14, we've changed Keyman configuration so that changes apply instantly. And I'll quickly show you what that looks like. So we open up configuration here. You can see there's no OK and cancel button. So when I'm changing an option here, I'll say I want to turn off start when Windows starts and it's the change is made now. I don't have to worry about anything else. When I close the app, it's it's saved. Or if I change this option, it applies instantly in every app that I'm using with Keyman. When we're looking at installing keyboard layouts in the past, you would add a keyboard layout and then you would get a, a dialogue with the, list of, the new keyboard layout listed and the OK and cancel button. It's never quite clear. What happens if I press cancel? Does the keyboard layout disappear or not? So by eliminating that, we reduce that confusion. We also make it possible um, so more can sorry, we also make it more consistent with other settings apps like the Windows settings and Mac OS settings and things like that. You got a glimpse of the installer a few minutes ago um, when I uh, ran through the download keyboard download. So that installer uh, does a whole lot better than it did in the past in, in terms of installing a keyboard and doing language association and all the other bits and pieces that have to happen behind the scenes. And the on-screen keyboard loads much faster, partly because we have turned on, we've removed the uh, Internet Explorer components from it. So you can see the, the font helper here. If I choose a keyboard, let's choose, no, that's not a very exciting keyboard. Yes, it is, that's Sinhala. So you have here this list of, of fonts in the font helper that work with the Sinhala keyboard, or you have the character map, which lets you drop characters immediately into your document. And all of those are a lot faster. Just means Keyman is getting out of your way a bit better. On Mac OS, uh, we do not currently have a uh, development lead for Mac OS. We hope that will change in the next couple of months with some new team members starting. So we've been doing mostly maintenance on Keyman for Mac OS. Uh, despite that, we've had some significant improvements. We've fixed up compatibility with Java apps. A lot of apps are written in the Java language and Keyman did not work correctly with those in version 13 and earlier. And now happy to say that it generally does. The European layouts, which have the additional key to the right of the shift key, they were not supported in the on-screen keyboard on Mac OS. So you couldn't type with the on-screen keyboard if, if that key was needed. So now we support that extra key. The compatibility modes were quite important. So on Mac OS, we have two different modes of running Keyman. We have a legacy compatibility mode and we have a modern mode. And the legacy compatibility mode exists because there are apps that were written some time ago that don't integrate all that well. And so Keyman needs to work around them to make it to allow you to actually type in them. The problem is that we have been unable to detect thus far which apps need compatibility mode and which apps can work in modern mode. So in previous versions of Keyman, we hard coded that list and we had a list of 10 or so apps which needed compatibility mode. But there are obviously more apps that need compatibility mode. So we've made that customizable and we'll actually demo that in the Mac OS presentation. We've also made a bunch of bug fixes around cursor keys and modifier keys. That's the shift, the uh, option, the command control keys uh, to make it so that you're, when you type, it's more consistent. Command for Linux, um, Eberhard joined us recently and um, has taken on the Command for Linux development. So he's only had a month or so in the 14.0 release cycle to actually do anything, but he's already got a bunch of things done, which is pretty exciting, including bringing in support for our latest version of Ubuntu, um, starting the process of integrating with Debian more closely so that you'll be able to install with apt install. If you're a Linux person, you'll know what that is. And if you're not, we won't worry too much. <laughs> also preparing to release on Fedora, so Red Hat Fedora in using their package manager. He's also made a lot of smaller bug fixes, including the um, integrations with the 
uh, the keyboard search and the localization. On Android, we did some analysis to determine which was the, the minimum supported version we wanted. And we found that there were very few people using uh, anything earlier than 5.0 uh, with recent versions of Keyman. And so we decided to go with 5.0 for a couple of reasons. One is that the, the software libraries we use increasingly don't support the older versions. And another is that the web component that we need to use uh, is upgradable in version five, but in earlier versions, it's, it's locked to a very, very old version of the web browser. We've redesigned some of the setup pages and the keyboard install process in line with the uh, keyboard install, uh, simplified keyboard search that I talked about earlier. We've made a number of improvements to the way predictions and corrections work. Particularly, uh, corrections are a lot better than they were in earlier versions. So handling transpositions, if you type BXO and you meant box, and uh, allowing multiple mistakes in a single word and things like that. We've also improved the case selection. So if you have a, key, a language that uses upper and lower case, and you type a word with a capital letter, for instance, at the start of a sentence, the predictions will now offer uh, the words with a capital letter, which makes them actually useful in that context where they weren't previously. And we'll be talking a lot more about those things again in the Android presentation coming up after this one. For iPhone and iPad, it's quite similar to the situation with command for Android. We've done uh, work around the setup to integrate the new simplified keyboard search. Uh, we've got a minimum version of 9.0 for, for iOS. Uh, we found that there were very few people using earlier versions, mostly because those devices are now so old that they don't really work anymore. We've improved the usability of the keyboard, making it quite a bit faster to load and display. And the same corrections and predictions that we have on Android, uh, we now have on iOS, we have on iOS as well. And again, the same thing with the uh, user case selection and, and offering the correct case for predictions. In Keyman Developer, there's a, a wide range of changes and I've just picked a few of them here. So we have new command key images for, the, for those languages that are written right to left so that the enter image and the backspace image actually point the direction that the text is going. We've improved BCP47 support. BCP47, uh, actually BCP stands for best current practice. It's a um, pseudo standard online of describing how to do, uh, name language or use language codes to identify languages. So we've improved the way that we use those language codes and we'll talk about that in a lot more detail in the Keyman developer presentation in a couple of days. We've made it possible to specify how the casing works for a lexical model for the, your predictive text. So if you have a language that has additional letters in it that aren't necessarily in English, or uh, you have, so for instance, Turkish, which has a dot, dotted and a dotless I, you can specify how that works um, as part of your lexical model. When you build your lexical model, the, you can now merge duplicate entries in the word list and it will normalize those entries so that if you have uh, decomposed diacritics and composed diacritic combinations in the same word list, it will figure out that they're the same thing. If that uh, scares you, don't worry about it. It pretty much doesn't have to be worried about. We have the uh, range expansions, which when you have a, a keyboard source file with a long list of letters like the alphabet from A to Z in English, you can shorten that list with the dot dot operator. And if you have caps lock keys that are affected by caps lock, you can now specify a single store which um, allows you to reduce the complexity of your keyboard. And you can see that example I have at the very bottom there, I'm using a range expansion to say all the alphabet keys from A to Z 
Again, I'll talk about all of these things in more detail in the Keyman developer presentation. We've also added support for ISO key codes. So traditionally Keyman used the K underscore key codes to describe the keys on the keyboard, which relates to the US English layout. Uh, that's fine for people working with US English. For other layouts, that's quite confusing because you have to say KQ, but you actually want the, the keycap actually says A. So you can now also use the ISO codes, which have a, a letter like the letter D for the fourth row, and then a number 01 for the first key across, and D02 and so on and so forth. So what's coming up on the roadmap? Keyman 15 is in planning now. So we'll have actually having a planning meeting in a few weeks time where we actually decide on our features. So everything I talk about today is subject to change, including the target release date at the end of this year. Uh, so this is a good time if you want to get in a feature request to, um, to ask us. And if you mention it at the end of this presentation, I'll make sure I take a note of it. There is one strategic feature that we'd like to add to version 15, and that is LDML, which is a part of CLDR. <laughs> so LDML is the Locale Data Markup Language. It's a standard for describing uh, information about languages, uh, including how the writing system works, how the uh, punctuation works, the numbering system works, and also now keyboard layouts. And when you've created a keyboard layout using this language, you can then share it to the CLDR, the Common Locale Data Repository. And this is a place where lots and lots of information stored in the LDML format um, is shared with uh, platform vendors such as Microsoft, Apple, Google, uh, who will then use it on, in their devices. Right now, every platform has its own keyboard system but they're all wanting to use a standardized keyboard system. And part of the reason they want to do this is that they've recognized that they don't have the resources or the capacity to create keyboards for every language in the world. And the community does, each community has that resource to do that. So what we want to do is we want to make it possible to use Keyman to work with these keyboards so that the community can start building the keyboards and using them. And in the end, hopefully, submit those keyboards through to the CLDR, the Common Locale Data Repository, and have them included in the operating system. So that no, then there is no need for Keyman, the app. So that's our core, function, uh, core feature that we'll be working on, and that will be the majority of our effort. But we do have three or four other things that we want to do as well. So one of the things we're going to do in the background is clean up some of our code by reducing the duplication across different platforms. And we call that our Keyman core effort. That's called technical debt. That's every line of code we write is a line of technical debt that we have to pay off at some point. So we want to reduce our technical debt. We have also want to uh, make it possible to note when a keyboard works for a language, but may not be the optimal one. So if you have a pan-African keyboard, and there are several out there, so there's a pan-Nigerian keyboard, a pan-Cameroonian keyboard, which works for hundreds of languages. And so it supports all these letters that may not actually be in the language that you're working with. So it works, but a preferred keyboard would actually support the language with just the letters that you want. And maybe you can type those letters a little more efficiently because you're not having to mix search through all of the other letters you're not interested in. We want to support mnemonic layouts on Mac OS and Linux. So a mnemonic layout is a layout that follows the hardware keyboard layout. So if you're using a French keyboard, some of the keys are in different locations to a US English keyboard. We've done this on Keyman for Windows for many years. Um, we just want to make it the same on Mac OS and Linux. On mobile, we would like to complete our caps lock improvements, introducing a caps lock layer and uh, make automatically 
uh, selecting the caps lock, the shift layer at the start of a sentence and little things like that. For Android and iOS, um, Android, we want to try and keep the same minimum version of 5.0. We'll see how we go. iOS, we'll almost certainly go to version 12. And partly that's because the majority of devices at 9.0 are very much end of life now. On Command Developer, we'll have more cross-platform tooling. So trying to make it so that it works on Mac OS and Linux better than it does right now, so that you can build keyboards without needing Windows. And also now is the opportunity to tell us what you want. Looking further into the future, looking at our roadmap, um, we want to add learning and user dictionaries to the predictive text, which I, is a lot of fun and a lot of complexity, but we really want to do it because that's when they, the predictive text becomes really good. We want to add support for morphological models. So that's polysynthetic languages, languages without word breaks as well, uh, and allowing you to work with, you know, languages that glue words together in, rather than English, which is lots of small words. Now that is a fair bit of research work, particularly because word lists don't work quite the same way in those, in those contexts. We get a lot of people asking us for themable keyboards. Um, so we'd like to make it possible for end users and keyboard developers to customize the look of the keyboard more easily than they can today. We also want to improve the touch keyboard with more long press and swipe style optimizations, which will be really cool because once it's in Keyman itself, then it will be available for every language that uses Keyman automatically. As I mentioned earlier, we'd like to make the localization customizable so that you can uh, build it yourself and share it with your community and you don't have to wait for us to do a new version of Keyman to get it in there. And we work with a number of people who make custom versions of Keyman and we want to improve the way that Keyman works for them using the application programming interfaces. That's about all I've got for today. Uh, this presentation will be placed online shortly. So you'll be able to view the slides to be able to click on the links and so on and so forth. And the video will be available in the next day or so after it finishes processing. So we've got a few minutes for questions, if there are any questions. Thank you for coming along and for, for listening. Just feel free to unmute and, and, and ask away. Wondering, um, I use Legacy SIL software like a Toolbox. Um, it wasn't working well with it uh, before. Is it now, does it uh, Keyman 14 work well with Toolbox? Unfortunately, not very well. What we say with Toolbox is continue to use the older version of Keyman. And that's partly because Toolbox doesn't actually work well with the Windows languages. So the vast majority of Windows apps out there work well with Keyman keyboards now because they look like a Windows keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, so we're sort of stuck. We can't sort of offer to work well with Toolbox and then continue to work well with Chrome or Word or something like that. But if you continue to use the older version of Keyman to work with Toolbox, then that should continue to work. So what version would you recommend then? Probably version eight possibly version nine. I can't remember off the top of my head which version is the last version that Toolbox had specific support for. Yeah, because so I use Paratex as well, and that's, yeah, it uses its own keyboard layout, and I was trying to uh, get it so it would work, everything would work across the board, So especially when you're using MT, you know, got MTTs. Yes. Translated. So uh, they're not, uh, most on computers, okay. Oh, that's right. So I'll try. But would eight work? I'm just trying to think. You know, would eight then work across Office and? Well, it wouldn't it, work in mobile, obviously, either. So you know. Yeah, the mobile is a separate kettle of fish, so you don't yeah. have to worry too much about that. So version eight will work. Uh, it just doesn't work quite as well. Uh, you sometimes get conflict with Windows keyboards, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it a bit tricky. <laughs> it is a bit tricky, you know, uh, on that in uh, 
doing just a simple dictionary and trying to get them to use it because um, it's nice and easy simple text and don't have to could just pump it into word and they can type in something and i can then uh, import it do all the wonderful stuff but so it's a toolbox issue right Matteo, but uh, I must say I very much like it on the mobile to be able to, you know, I've got special characters like a lot of languages and it's nice, it uh, helps to, uh, shall we say, improve the standing of the language and it's the community if they can uh, use it in their uh, mobiles, so that's, uh, that's very, very, very handy, I must say, a great yeah, step forward that was. We're pretty excited about that. I'm particularly excited about getting lexical models in as well, because that's then you see your not only the letters of your language, but the words of your language appearing. Um, and really makes you feel a bit more special too. Yes, and the predictive, um, I, that's on its that's on its way as well, is it? Or is it that's you know, already available today? Right. So that, okay. we've got some discussions about that um, in a couple of days' time. Right. And I, I assume that learns, or it's uh, it's just learning in the background, is it? At this point, not learning. That will be a future version. Um, right. For this version, it's uh, based on a word list. All oh, right. And and a frequ frequency word list. Right. So how do I get that word list in to it then? So it's probably outside scope of this um, this yeah, discussion. Sorry. Um, but that's okay. So there's um, documentation on help.keyman.com on how to do that. Right. Also, Joshua will be presenting on lexical models, as I said, in a couple of days um, in the same, the same webinar series. Right. And so there'll be some more detail there. Um, right. And also, if you do have any questions, do just jump onto the Keyman community website, which is yeah. accessible from keyman.com and ask, ask them there. and we can help it. Yes, yeah, so well, I'll be listening to the next one. So it's probably answered in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it's great. It also works with the apps, you know, the Lexicon uh, app. So I've got the Lexicon in there and you can use it for the keyboard there to search for it. It's, uh, yeah, it's really great, I must say. Uh, it's, we just, you guys have just moved things on so massively. It's just incredible. It really is quantum leaps. And just uh, as a side question, do you think lockdowns helped you? Because it seems as though there's been an awful lot of flurry <laughs> and activity. I, I think it's actually probably hurt us a bit because we're all in different countries. Um, all the four, all the four lead developers are in different countries, and we just can't get together. So that right. reduces our creative design session capability. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, thank you. For that. Well, thank you, John. Right. I said, sorry, I'm the only one, but I'm sure everybody else is probably in a different time zone and thinks, oh, I'll download it later. But thanks are for there, all you're doing, you guys. There are other people here too. So you're not the only person here. All right. <laughs> yes. No, I meant uh, outside your team, is it? Or has other people joined them? That oh, there seen? are. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can see now. Yeah. Right. There you go. I've got you on there, just the, the reduced uh, frame. Right. Thanks very sure. much. Thank you, John. Any other questions? Yeah, hello everybody, I'm Ibrahima. My question is, um, you talked about the, the updates, including like the translations, you have to wait until the next update. Are those like from like 14 to 15 or the patches in between? That was my question. Thank you for the question. And it's it's nice to see your face after talking on the um, forum for quite a bit. Uh, so that would be minor patch updates. So it's usually quite easy for us to do that that patch and, and deploy it, especially for iPhone and Android. It's fairly um, frictionless. So that would be our aim is to, to do those as patches to the existing stable version. And about the... Um the data local repository. You know, I'm actually working on that and I've uh, been the main contributor for Fuller. Mm -hmm. It's missing the, the keyboard like feature and uh, the, the coding is extremely complex because I've seen examples. It is so difficult to, to do for something one doesn't know. I don't know what kind of language they use, 
but um, will it be possible to like export a, an existing keyboard to that kind of uh, model? That's a really good question. And one of the big things that we're trying to figure out is how to make it easier to build those keyboards because uh, yes, the the description language for LDML for keyboards is very complex. So we will have a visual editor for sure for the um, LDML keyboards, which should take away a lot of that pain. And then we'll try and build tools to um, port across Keyman keyboards. Some of them don't port across very well because they, the way that they work is quite different to the way the LDML keyboards work. Uh, but we'll see what we, we certainly have that as one of our aims to make that possible and uh, definitely to have development tools to um, take you away from having to edit those um, XML files directly. Thank you. Thank you. So we are coming up to the end of um, this particular session and the next session starts in 15 minutes, which is the uh, command for Android session that Darcy will be leading. Um, I think we're going to just leave the Zoom open. I'm actually going to disappear because I need to reboot my computer to Mac OS to prepare for my next presentation. But I'll be back in just a few minutes. So if you do have any questions um, and people are wanting to stick around, um, please feel free to ask them. Thank you everybody for joining and um, it's been a pleasure to share this with you and look forward to providing more versions of Keyman in the future. Thank you.